This year, the inauguration ceremony is hosted for the undergraduates of two bachelors and we hope that you are excited to witness this remarkable event. We would like to pay our sincere gratitude to all of you for joining with us today. We would like to inform you all that today we will be on live in Ruhuna Media YouTube channel and also University of Ruhuna Facebook page. Today, we are gathered here to open a new chapter of the professional lives of a young group of undergraduates in the Department of Nursing, Faculty of the Life of Sciences, University of Rimina. Now, it's time for the arrival of the undergraduate nursing students who are taking the night to the of today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise from your seats for the University Anthem.
chief guests and other dignitaries to join us in the traditional lighting of the oil lamp. Ladies and gentlemen, may we invite our dignitaries now to please proceed to the traditional lamp as a customary in this part of the world. We commence any auspicious occasion with the divine blessings that light is a testament in assuring the positive energy of our occasion. So now, let's start off by inviting our chief guest to do the honors. Indeed, keeping in line with the tradition and culture of Sri Lanka and giving light to this event, first and foremost, we'd like to invite to light today's oil lamp, the chief guest, Senior Professor Sujil Amrasena, the Vice Chancellor of University of Rahuna, Professor EPS Chandana, Deputy Vice Chancellor of University of Rahuna, Professor Imanjur Kodukola, Dean, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Rahuna, a senior lecturer representing University of Rahuna. Faculty of Medicine, we'd also like to be joined by our honorable guest, Professor Manjula Hetiarachi, Head, Nuclear Medicine Unit, Faculty of Medicine, University of Rahuna, our guest of honor, Dr. Sunil Dissinwa, Dean, Faculty of Health Sciences, Open University of Sri Lanka, Ms. M.P.C. Samanmani, Director of Nursing, Medical Services, Ministry of Health, followed by Dr. Harshini Piris. Head of the Department of Medical Laboratory Sciences, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Rahuna. Dr. Bimba Vikramaruchi, Head of the Department, Department of Pharmacy, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, 
University of Rohana, Ms. Vilya Patraja, Head of the Department, Department of Pharmacy, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Rohana, and also Ms. G. H. C. Nadishani, Assistant Registrar, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. Ms. Surani Fernando, Assistant Bursa, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Rohana. Deputy Director of Teaching Hospital, Karapitiya. Director of Teaching Hospital, Mahamadara. Chief Nursing Officer of Teaching Hospital Karapitiya Chief Nursing Officer of Teaching Hospital Mahamodara Representing the Medical Faculty Academic Staff Professor Bilisha Pereira and Professor Gaya Vijayaratna student each representing students from both batches and finally we'd like also to be joined by one parent We'd also be like to be joined by Mr. Arunasiri, Special Red Nursing Officer, Teaching Hospital, Karampitiya. So, I invite the nursing undergraduates of 13th batch to welcome the gathering with their talents.
Thank you for bringing the glamour to this event. Now, to welcome you all officially, I cordially invite the Dean of the Faculty of Allergic Sciences, University of Brunel, Professor Imetra Kotipal, who is the great pillar behind the success of this event. Dear sir, now this time is for you to deliver the welcome. Good morning, children. I warmly uh, and respectfully welcome you all who have come here to be an inspiration to the undergraduates participating today. We are duty bound to inspire and 
and guide new undergraduates. Therefore, the inauguration ceremony for new students, we annually invite, for the new inauguration ceremony, we annually invite a very successful, highly admired, extraordinary, experienced health professional to deliver the inaugural speech to explain newcomers about their duties and responsibilities as undergraduates, sharing his unique experiences. Later, oath taking of students of all degree programs also is annually conducted. Further, we conduct capping and oath taking ceremony for nursing undergraduates separately. For the capping ceremony as well, we invite a similar caliber nursing health professional to clearly highlight the duties and responsibilities and professional commitment that is expected from nursing students. Due to the COVID pandemic, we were not able to conduct any of these uh, ceremonies during the past two years. Therefore, considering the logistic issues of conducting a uh, different number of uh, ceremonies, we, faculty board, decided to hold the, all these ceremonies together today. Therefore, today we will experience in our lecture capping and what taking of nursing undergraduates and inspirational speech by senior, senior nursing professional other than our uh, vice chancellor speech. Dear sir, senior professor Suryo Amar said, you are warmly and uh, respectfully uh, welcome for this conglomerate of ceremonies. Your presence is an inspiration to all of us here. Invited guest speakers, Dr. Sonia Silva and Professor Manu Laitiyaraji, I respectfully welcome both of you for today's event. I am confident that your inputs will enrich the students' career. Members, uh, the academic members from the uh, Faculty of Medicine, uh, the, the, I can see uh, senior professors, professors participating in this event. I warmly welcome you all as well for this ceremony. Uh, Director Mahamad Hospital, Dr. Mursena, uh, Dr. Hashim Abhim Mursekra, the Deputy Director of Karapati Hospital, and uh, Seen, uh, seen notes from uh, Karapati Hospital and Mahamudra Hospital, uh, <coughs> matrons, ward sisters, ward masters. <coughs> Whatever it is we teach in the faculty, ultimately the, these students will follow you. So you are very important for us, for all of us. Your participation in this ceremony will inspire our students. Uh, academic assistant registrar, assistant bursar from our faculty, and uh, most importantly, the students and the parents. Finally, your love will come, and I need new students to realize that you are the most important persons in the faculty. And as the budding professionals, the way you speak, eat, dress, and behave will be observed by the rest of the world. All of us gathered here today to wish you all a blessed, successful, and blissful university life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please remain on stage for a moment. I would like to invite you once again to introduce the guest of 
today's inaugural lecture, Professor Manju Chaitanya the head of the Neil Clare Medicine Unit, Faculty of Medicine, University of Ravana. Dr. So, Manjula is not a stranger for all of us here. For the new students to know, I will introduce him. Uh, Dr. Manjula is currently working as the professor and head of the department of uh, the head of the nuclear medicine unit, faculty of medicine, and university of Kuhn. I am not going to present you his long uh, list of credentials, but briefly to Introducing to you all, he is from Andhra College and he has graduated in 1998 with a second class honors degree from the Faculty of Medicine here. Having served as a medical officer in National Hospital of Sri Lanka, he joined the Nuclear Medicine Unit Faculty of Medicine as its first academic member in 2001. He has received his training in the field of nuclear medicine in Philippines, Japan, Thailand, Singapore, and India, and many other countries. A nuclear medicine unit of this faculty offers immunodiagnostic services to the public as well as private sector. And it's the national center for newborn screening for congenital hypothyroidism. Dr. Mandela earned the Doctor of Philosophy degree in 2008 and he was promoted to the post of professor in uh, 2015. for the advancement of science. Young scholar of the University of Pune in 2010, the most outstanding young investigator in medical sciences in Sri Lanka for the year 2010 from the Committee of Vice Chancellors and Directors of UGC and most outstanding senior scholar of the University of Pune in 2000. 19. That is one of the lifetime awards in the university. He has received several research grants from local and foreign institutions. He has supervised several PhD and master's projects. As the the uh, most important uh, one for all of us here today, when Dr. Manjula at that time uh, was the founder coordinator for the BSc nursing degree program of Allied Health Sciences during 2009 to 12 period when this was established. Even extraordinary and distinguished academic and an eminent researcher. Dear sir, I uh, call upon Dr. Uh, Manjula to speak to our students.
good morning dear students of the 12th and the 13th batch of the allied health sciences and uh, this presentation is mainly for you but uh, i would like to thank the all the audience here uh, especially our vice chancellor senior professor suji amrasen and the other guest of honor dr sunil de silva today uh, and including the directors from the tj hospital karapiti and mahamodara and the all the administrative and the professional staff from the karapiti and mahamodara hospitals the academic staff from the allied health sciences faculty and the medical faculty and the parents so <coughs> when professor imendra invited me for this presentation i thought is it too early but then i realized that i worked with the first and second batch now i am going to talk to the 12th and 13th batch it mean almost a 10 years a history is it so my uh, presentation is mainly focused on you all the uh, especially the first years and second years i am sure none of you all have think about this degree the special in allied health sciences nursing pharmacy or medical laboratory sciences when you all are doing a levels almost a one or two years ago even though you all are studying in bio biological sciences your dreams or your thought process may in a different angle usually when you are doing biology everybody wants to be a medical medicine or medical officer in the later life but we all know with the demand uh, and the present uh, system in sri lanka is such that those who are performing well at district levels will get that entry i know even here there may be few students those who perform better than those who have already selected for medicine if the district quota is no longer there but still <coughs> we need to accept what we have to get and what's available in the system but you, you all are gathered here or you entered the allied health sciences faculty so that i am sure you will be getting a better opportunities or better avenues then those who are following the traditional curriculums and traditional degree programs in sri lanka so therefore i am sure you will find in a day that you will have fortunate enough to be practice as nursing graduate or medical laboratory scientist or graduate pharmacist in this system not only in sri lanka but even the other countries so when comparing the employment opportunities and the options available you all are far ahead with other associated biological sciences so i am not going to describe fully the pros and cons of these degree programs but now that you all are starting a new journey so that's why i decided to have this topic today even though some of you may be in the second year we missed you all next last year for your inauguration but still you all are starting fresh suppose after this program so you will will get a new vision into this new journey with a new promise so that you all are, your parents definitely would be happy to see you all graduating and performing well <coughs> so we all gathered today and you all are listening to me we all are finding our way to need your own map to find because uh, still we are in the middle because we have already passed the beginning but not yet to go into the end so we are making our own pathway so on our maps to proceed and we all need some new thoughts and new findings to proceed with <coughs> so I mean, I, when I got this invitation, I thought I should uh, just do. My, I mean, I do some nostalgic moments in my life when I first enrolled in the Allied Health Sciences program. So when I joined in 2001, no one thought 
about to develop such degree programs, but later on, the few academics as well as the administration of the University of Rohona and Faculty of Medicine geared to develop these new degree programs. So there were small committees then and there. So from the beginning, I involved in the nursing degree program uh, preparation. So, but uh, yet around the 2007-8 period, that the, towards the end of the first decade of 20, uh, 21st century, so we were called to see this program with a new findings, so new way of thinking, and to listen this in a new way. And uh, because at that time only the open universities giving opportunities for those who are already employed nursing officers to have a degree while they are in service. But still we find that to develop a degree program, we cannot limit to the in-service staff, but to the those who are passing out A-levels, they should be graduated and should get better employment opportunities than what is available at that time. So, <coughs> Therefore, we have new way of thinking so that University Grant Commission of Sri Lanka came with this offer to have degrees in allied health sciences in almost all medical faculties in Sri Lanka. So therefore, it is our responsibility to create a strong and responsive health system in Sri Lanka with that motive, most of the uh, academics joined together to have this different degree programs in Sri Lanka. So our aim to develop this society <coughs> and with a new interdisciplinary health care system and to transform our culture so that we we'll generate new leaders and new champions to the system and those who are ready to respond to the needs of the country you know, even at that time, we were just uh, recovering from the tsunami experience. So, it's one of the catastrophic we had in early 2005 or the, towards the late 2004. So, the recovery process was a bit low. But at that time, we know that not only the medical officers, but the other fields has to be developed to face such challenges. And even now, for today, we know we are... Uh, <coughs> just recovering or in the towards the end of this current pandemic and probably a new normal situation will come. So then again it will stress that not only the medical but the associate fields are having a responsibility to develop this and to improve the patient care of the country. <coughs> so our aim was to <coughs> change in the professional careers. So we know there were discussions going on that at that time about this traditionally inward looking reactive culture to an outward looking protective culture <coughs> so that the equality as well as the uh, opportunities to remove these boundaries of professionalism into a new culture so that interprofessional collaboration in education and practice is a must. So there is an increase in demand for accountability even in the health system and the, especially the interna internationalization of the employability is a big issue. You know, we in a third world, we, are, we have to develop our education system so that the more graduated people will go out and earn money than just sending people for cheap in the labor community. So in that sense, we identified that this uh, professional development and to have health sciences degree program is a must to Sri Lanka to move forward. So therefore, we need to find a balance in the new paradigm. So the, all the health professionals retain their high degree of competence and the individual professional identities. <coughs> Still with time we have to balance this with the professional identities, not as an individual requirement, but on one another contributions. So <coughs> therefore we need to develop the professionalism in the health sector to have the capacity to work happily and the productivity together. 
and we should have the confident on one another contributions to health and the community services as a whole. So what we are lacking in our system is this, the, the interpreter system, especially on collaboration. So still we find it little difficult to work as a team and sometimes we forget about the collective responsibility. We we'll take uh, upper hand most of the time, one or two. And then how about the shared leadership, the risk and the accountability. And these things are necessary in the decision making process in our system. So we either this is lacking in our health institutes or merely absent in most of the occasions. And you know there are a lot of barriers in between. So even today you will see the disciplinary barriers and disciplinary boundaries in between different professions as well as even within the profession. For example, I'm just taking the nursing officers only. So there were two trade unions and locked horns together. And so the everything is in a chaotic situation 